Welcome to the Harvard Art Museums and to tonight's lecture, Candida Hofer, Turks in Germany, 1979. My name is Ava Hampton, and I'm a junior living in Courier House, and I concentrate in history and literature. And my name is Kate Moran. I'm a senior in Kirkland House, concentrating in English. Ava and I are both on the student board of the Harvard Art Museums and are delighted to welcome you to the museums on behalf of our student community. Please now be sure to turn off your cell phones and help me to warmly welcome Lynette Roth, the Daimler Curator of the Bush Reisinger Museum and Head of the Division of Modern and Contemporary Art, who will introduce tonight's program. Thank you, Ava and Kate. Um, I am pleased to welcome you to this year's Bush Reisinger Museum Lecture. Tonight, a conversation with renowned German photographer, Candida Hofer. This lecture series, which uh, we held, we've held annually since 2005, is generously sponsored by the German Friends of the Bush Reisinger Museum. In addition, modern and contemporary art programs at the Harvard Art Museums are made possible in part by generous support from the Emily Raul Pulitzer and Joseph Pulitzer Jr. Fund for Modern and Contemporary Art. Candida Hofer, as I don't need to tell, I'm sure most of you, uh, is known worldwide for her breathtakingly meticulous depictions of unpopulated architectural spaces dedicated to culture, such as museums, theaters, libraries, and universities. Thanks to the artist's own generosity in 2008, the Bush Reisinger Museum holds her large-scale Pierpoint Morgan Library 4, which we recently exhibited in our contemporary gallery in an installation on the theme of the built environment. From 1976 to 1982, Hofer participated in Berndt and Hille Becher's groundbreaking photography course at the Dusseldorf Art Academy. The students of that course, the so-called Dusseldorf School of Photography, or Becher School, alongside Hofer photographers such as Axel Hütte, Thomas Struth, and Thomas Ruf, are known for redefining the photographic medium for their generation, work characterized for its documentary quality, attention to detail, and its monumental size. Tonight, however, we are here to discuss one of the artist's earliest series, Turks in Germany, 1979. A recent acquisition by the Bush Reisinger Museum, her first slide projection is little known in the United States, and I am proud to say is being shown here for the first time in this country. With images made during the 1970s, the slide projection is the earliest artwork included in our current exhibition of contemporary art, Crossing Lines, Constructing Home, Displacement and Belonging in Contemporary Art. I first became aware of her first slide projection, Turks in Germany, while living in Cologne in the early 2000s, when it was featured in a groundbreaking exhibition organized by the Kölnischer Kunstverein entitled Project Migration. It was particularly poignant for me to see this early work of Hofer's in Cologne, a city with a strong Turkish-German community, then already in its third generation. Her first series documents social and cultural changes in West Germany as a result of its post-war labor recruitment program. Gastarbeiter, so-called guest workers, were needed to su supplement the labor force after the country lost almost three million men in the Second World War. The program began in 1955 with Italy, followed by Spain, Turkey in 1961, then Morocco, Tunisia, Portugal, and Yugoslavia. Just to give you a little bit of background um, on the historic context um, in, uh, for the series, uh, the images most associated with the foreign language labor force in Germany after the Second World War are press photos from 1964 of the millionth guest worker uh, arriving since the start of the program in 1955. And we see here Portuguese carpenter Armando Rodriguez, who was celebrated upon his arrival in the Cologne train station and gifted a moped, a sign of how much the West Germans had come to rely on foreign labor for their so-called economic miracle. And in fact, now Rodriguez's uh, moped is in the German uh, History Museum. 
Recruitment ended in 1973, and even if the initial stance was that Germany's so-called guest worker program was temporary, by the time Herfer begins her series, the public discussion had changed. By this time, Turks, who were most likely to renew their residency visas indefinitely, were the largest immigrant population in West Germany, and as Muslims, the least accepted. With its images of people out and about in shops, parks, and markets, as well as in private domestic spaces, as seen here, her first series shows Turks creating spaces of their own. In the current exhibition, her series helps anchor a gallery dedicated to constructions and serves not only as an important historic example of economic migration, but also of the ways in which identities and places evolve as a result of immigration. I am deeply honored to have the artist here with us tonight to discuss this series and its residence in her body of work at large. Herfer's internationally recognized work is represented in collections and exhibitions literally too numerous to mention. And so rather than list them all and her many accolades, uh, I assume you, like me, would now rather hear from the artist herself. So please join me in warmly welcoming Candida Herfer. And, oh, now you can hear me. <laughs> I was saying I've thought about this series since 2005 when I saw it in Cologne and, um, uh, and since I started here at the Bush Reisinger Museum and we were so fortunate to have such a representative work of yours in the collection, thought that this was an important series um, also for an American audience, even though it sounds like that might have seemed uh, counterintuitive uh, to you. Um, so I thought we would just start at the beginning, um, and I just wanted to um, begin by asking you uh, why, why you started this series um, in 1972. Yeah, before uh, I start with this project, I have uh, worked in Hamburg for two years, and this was uh, in, in a photo studio. And the uh, photographer, uh, Werner Buckelberg, he has done uh, advertising photographs uh, for the Stern, Stern magazine. And uh, so this was a totally different world. Uh, and then I come back to, to Germany. And uh, I had uh, so friends of mine lived next to the Volksgarten in Cologne. And the Fox Garden is a really uh, beautiful big park. And then I realized that uh, the Fox Garden changed, uh, changed a lot. And so there, there have been, like you can see here, uh, sometimes only men and nearby women with kids, also sometimes, but rarely they have been mixed. And uh, also what, I, what, I, what astonished me, that this kind, these people, they, they don't know the country, they don't know the attitude of the people. Uh, and I had the feeling that they feel comfortable. And they, they use uh, the park as they like it, maybe they also the, uh, how they are doing it in, in Turkey. And uh, so I start with the park because, in my opinion, this was the easiest to start because it's an open place, and I could go around, and it, it's also because the weather was nice, the people are nice, and so. And I started to work, and, and I, I have done uh, black and white photographs and uh, color slides uh, more or less at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so slide at this time was, for me, the easiest way to 
uh, create a photograph because in the slide, when it's developed, the image is there. So in this black and white, you have to do uh, developing prints and uh, things like this. And also, I, I like to do um, projections. And uh, so normally, you, you, I, I, I do the size of the projection. It depends on the size of the room. And, uh, and it has something between movie and uh, stills. Mm -hmm. And then later, I, get, uh, I met a social worker, a Turkish one. And he introduced me to some family. So I also had access to private houses. But this was later, when I still was in Dusseldorf at the art school. And at this time, the art school in Dusseldorf, no photo teacher, only film class. But film class, <coughs> the professor was really nice, and I could do what I want. And I wanted to finish the Turkish project, and especially the projection. And uh, then I, I went to uh, other cities nearby, like uh, Dortmund, and I also visited uh, Berlin. Berlin was l different from the other town in the Ruhrgebiet and also in Cologne and uh, Düsseldorf. They have a big, bigger community. The restaurants have been much more bigger. And uh, I also had the feeling, I, I didn't feel very comfortable when I, when I went there. And I only took a uh, few photographs there. And, but you don't, you, I'm sorry, you don't um, note, I noticed that in the black and white um, photos you'll list sort of, you know, where um, the street even and the city where the photos are made, but in the slide projection um, it all kind of comes together from all of yeah, these different yeah. uh, cities. Uh, so I also took, uh, but in Berlin I think I only take uh, one photograph, uh, this was a market next to a, a canal, channel, no, this is canal. Canal, yeah, can't, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. No. <laughs> but, but there, <laughs> so I, I had, uh, my, my rem remembering from Berlin is not so, so, but Hamburg was quite okay. Do I, you think I, it's because you'd lived in those other cities before, and so also maybe, you know, you, no, I don't, don't I think. I don't, 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 don't think so. Uh, and and Ham, Hamburg was uh, was quite quite good for me. And I lived uh, at a, a friend of a friend of mine house in in an area where a lot of uh, Turkish people have restaurants and shops. So I could just pass the street, and there was, there was what I wanted to take photograph. And uh, also, I had access to private houses there. And uh, also, it was quite nice for me to, it, it, not, not relationship, but I, I could understand uh, why they also like to be in Germany or why they prefer to live, maybe go back to Turkey or so. But, and, uh, and then, also, I, I was really astonished that they invited me for dinner, and then sometimes they offer me a Nescafe mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of uh, Turkish tea, and uh, and then uh, in a, I, I wanted to stop at a point uh, this project, and I think I worked on it for five years, and. Uh, by, by chance, uh, there was a Rundgang at the academy, and uh, I had a quite nice big room uh, where I could show my, my slide projection, quite, quite, quite big. So this is where um, professors, but also other students and the public yeah. can come and see what students are working on yeah. at the academy. And, uh, and because I was, uh, good friends of the gallerist Konrad Fischer. And uh, he told me that uh, Bernd uh, will get the professors, professorship, 
Bernd Becher and uh, so Hilla and Bernd uh, come over and looked at my work and I was really astonished that, uh, that they liked it very much. I, I didn't know them uh, very well, but uh, yeah, then <laughs> this was You're answering a, a lot of questions already. Also, sorry, <laughs> okay. I stopped talking. I want to go back. Uh, you mentioned the, the gallery, um, Conrad Fisher, yeah. and I think that's also important for thinking about after you showed um, the slides for the first time at the Art Academy, but you also showed them at the gallery, Conrad Fisher, which um, uh, members of our audience may know as, as really, by this time, one of the most uh, significant galleries for American and uh, European art mm -hmm. um, in, in uh, certainly in Germany. But, um, and you did an exhibition there in 1975, and we have the um, invitation to that um, exhibition up on the screen. And I was interested in hearing um, about this sort of initial gallery presentation and also the fact that you used on the invite, and you can correct me if this was someone else's um, choice of a quote, you used a quote from the uh, Ruhr Nachrichten, mm -hmm. so the regional paper um, in this industrial mm -hmm. um, area in Germany <coughs> called the Ruhr um, that says, um, what is necessary is an extensive integration of guest workers. So referencing that, um, putting the, the work that you were doing very much in the context of the labor recruitment program. Uh, I, I, I think this, this se sentence, uh, in, in a way, it's a point of what I wanted to show, but uh, I think now I would, would not use it <laughs> anymore. So, and, but all, what I would like to, to, uh, to say about the place, uh, so Konrad Fischer, I, it was his first exhibition place uh, which he had in Düsseldorf. And this was also the first uh, place and time that Karl André has done an exhibition at this place. And uh, it's like a tunnel and it has a glass door in front and a glass door in the back. And it was in a, in a, in a very busy area. Here were, have been some art museums and then come quite, quite small street. And then here have been the, the, uh, the pubs uh, and, where, where, and, and, and a little bit uh, far away uh, there was an academy. So it was a, a very, very nice situation also for, for me to, to show the exhibition because uh, to show the slides uh, uh, because it was a working area. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but because it was uh, slides, we started when it getting a little bit darker outside and we stopped it after, I don't know, 12 or so. And this was also the time where the people are going to enjoy the nightlife. What, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and it, I think people liked it very much. And I, I really liked very much uh, uh, to present it in, in, in this situation and this architecture. So. That it really became a part of, of the movement around um, that area, but also that people who weren't intending to enter into an art gallery were exposed to the. Uh, I, I, you, you, you could not enter. The, the, the glass door was always uh, closed, and uh, so Conrad has given Erika, so the, daughter, uh, the sister of him and me, uh, the place, and we could show what what we want. And also, I wanted to show my work. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> yeah. um, I wanted to. Um, get back to just um, a few more questions about the, the slide projection. So there are 80 slides in the slide projection. Um, and I think what's really noticeable um, is also the attention to sort of everyday details. So the loaves of bread and the cassette tapes and the advertisements and in both Turkish and in German. Um, and um, you know, you've been described as someone who's obviously very committed to um, the everyday. Uh, and I was thinking about this much larger body of work that then you had to 
cull down to 80 slides, um, I'm assuming to fit the standard slide carousel. Mm -hmm. So how did you go about making that selection? It seems like you, we sort of start in the interiors and then we kind of move to the shops and then at the end we, we're in the public sphere, we're in the, on the street and in the farmer's market. Oh, long time ago. <laughs> Uh, what I remember is that I had, so our class was quite small and there, there have been two other, uh, like Thomas Trude and Axel Hütte, and we had a, a very good uh, relationship. And as I remember, they helped me to put the uh, yeah, so the line for this. The, 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 the order, or determine the order of the slides. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, at this time, I had uh, two slide projection projectors, and we are sitting in my small apartment in in Dusseldorf, and uh, we worked on it very concentrated. And uh, but then it. It was, it was very nice and very helpful. And uh, I don't know how, how many slides I have, I have done, but uh, quite a lot. And uh, so that's, and, and what also interested me in, in, in how the Turkish people, not only how the, the Turkish people live, but also how they do the interior of the, mm -hmm. the restaurants and the, the shops, and also similar looks at, at his houses, private houses. So, and I, I like very much how they, wie nennt man das, die anordnen, organize. The cans and, and I don't know if we yeah, like, I'm and, and like one I've got. and and like the how they decorate the windows. That's that's what I also like like very much and how they bring. Sometimes uh, I think this is Berlin. It looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is in in Dortmund. Oh, this is here. This is here. Yeah. So this this is another I wanted I wanted to you mentioned that you um, you like the slide format um, because you could just have them made um, and um, Amy Dupont has done uh, a lot of work on this series and she talks a lot about Dusseldorf and Cologne um, as being places to think about projection technologies after. The war, so um, the Zero Group or the work of Imi Knöbel. Um, and I was curious if thinking about projection um, and those sort of predecessors um, in the area, someone like Otto Pina, whose work uh, we have represented well here in the museum as well, were these um, artists that you were thinking about at all when you chose projection technology, or was it more? Um, you could have the slides made in color and... Um... No, I, 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 I don't... I mean, at this time, I, I also was not thinking that maybe uh, the work which I'm doing now will, we, we can see today here. And of course, I know, I, I know the artist which, which you mentioned, but I, I, I mean, normally, I don't think about and also, I think I never seen a projection by them. So, uh -huh. I mean, it's. But it does create, um, as you were describing with the Conrad Fisher Gallery, it does create a different kind of social space and a different kind of um, relationship of the work to the viewer or the visitor. So, the fact that you know we can look at your slide projection now as a group um, and not, you know, I mean, which of course, that would be another question is, is the size of, is the size of your um, photographs also intended to allow us to kind of, you know, not, not just be looking um, individually at a work and, and kind of moving on in a museum, mm -hmm. but um, are you hoping to create a more um, dynamic 
engagement by using a projection? So what, what I try to find out uh, a, a time, it's one second enough, two seconds or three seconds. And uh, I think it's two or three seconds now, no? And, uh, yeah. It's, it's slow, actually. I mean, it's, I think yeah, it's... Yeah, yeah, so that you can see single, 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 single. Yeah. Does, that, does that sort of temporal experience have anything to do with your early film class or your... Yeah, my film class. <laughs> <laughs> because it may not be... Um, widely known, but you did you did do a film which you showed recently in an exhibition in Dusseldorf, I believe, for the first time. Uh, I mean, uh, because I I, I I was in a in a film class. Uh, Ole John Ole John was a director, and in the house where I have living at this time, there lived also Tony Morgan. Tony Morgan, I don't know if someone know about him. Uh, he's a British uh, performance artist, a very nice uh, person, and he has a, a very nice uh, big film camera. And in the street where, where we have been living, there was also a nice ice cafe. And uh, so I asked him, uh, what do you think? I feel guilty without doing any movie. And uh, can can we do something together? Very simple. And he said, yeah. And he said, yeah, yeah, kein problem. And uh, so, and the idea was very simple. And we went to the place. We asked for permission. And because we are normal guests in this ice cafe, he agreed. And uh, so, he has done. Uh, uh, he sh uh, when I was drinking a cappuccino, and when the, the, uh, the cup of cappuccino was empty, we changed the places. And I was all, all the time laughing, and you could see that I really feel quite shy and, and uh, moving around and so. And uh, Tony, he was like an actor. He was sitting down, calm, and he was reading at a magazine, and he looked in the camera, cafe uh, umdrehen, uh, cappuccino, and uh, and uh, yeah, and then it was over. And I was very surprised when uh, we show this in the Kunstpalast. This was an exhibition some years ago with the title Düsseldorf, and so because. The place was in Düsseldorf. We have been living in Düsseldorf, and I show it to the curator and the director, and we all liked it very much. And uh, then also we we used uh, uh, original materials. So we made copies. What was not so easy to find a person mm -hmm. to still doing it, and uh, and that was. And you also returned to projection um, for that exhibition yeah. as well, correct? It was an opportunity to go back into the archive, and, and that, that was very interesting to me to think that while you started out with projection, um, and you did have one uh, work in projection, the 80 pictures, um, but, but to now return to it again, um, how was that to go back and look at the early Dusseldorf images and think about them together with more recent work. I mean, what what I'm doing now is is a, is a little similar. I mean, I I I mean, I do projections now more and more, uh, and also photographs uh, with a camera which I can carry around with me all the time, more or less all the time. And when I see something, then I. We have, uh, some, we have some examples of that, but I'm saving them for last. So absolutely. we'll we'll make everyone wait uh, to see to see some of the most uh, most recent work because I do okay. think um, it it for me it resonated very much with um, actually a lot of the um, the imagery that you were drawn to uh, already in the in the 70s. 
Um, I wanted to, I, I got a, a picture from the internet um, because when I think of slide, um, projections in Germany. I always think of the so-called Dia Abende and the fact that you know people got together after they their travels and had a glass of wine with the family and you know it's this kind of idea of armchair traveling that you're going to was this mm -hmm. at all something that you sort of had experienced yourself or was a part of your thinking about uh, slide projectors at all. I mean, we typically think of schools and boardrooms, and but it really was a very familiar, um, most family uh, event. I remember the, the uh, a girlfriend. Uh, I liked her very much, and uh, she traveled a lot, and uh, she has done things like this. I didn't like it. Oh, you didn't like it. <laughs> So she would invite you to her yeah, 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 her slide yeah, yeah, yeah. evenings. Um, okay. That answers that question. Yes. <laughs> um, you mentioned too that when you were making um, uh, your photographs, you also shot simultaneously in black and white and in um, color that were used for the slide projections. And um, as you well know, and um, uh, we did acquire five of your black and white uh, vintage prints from the Turks in Germany series, some of which are very similar to mm -hmm. the works that are in the slide projection. And I was just hoping you could say a little bit more about those prints and the decision then to, you mentioned it's, it's also um, a sort of technical um, challenge, right? That with the black and white, you had to actually do, do the, the work. Um, but were there other reasons why you chose um, both black and white and color for the series? And um, uh, you know, what the, the prints that you had made um, that we now have in the museum, um, what was the, um, the way that you exhibited or thought about those? Uh, maybe I, I told you about what uh, Museum Ludwig uh, has done. So they have. Uh, bought also the slide projection and some really small vintage prints. And the, this vintage prints I have done because I wanted to offer, a, uh, I also have done a, a, a book, a Biasa Svinetmanas um, proposal. Uh huh, yeah, a, to, a book. To, you sort to, of designed to, a book. Yeah, to, um, to, 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 to show it to an to a editor. But there was no chance. Nobody wanted to to have a book, and uh, but I still and have the. This was in the 70s. The the prints and the book idea was. Uh, no, you are at the end, end of the 17th century, and uh, but I still have the photographs, and uh, so I'm quite happy that <laughs> that I keep the photographs uh, and also keep them in a good way, and that's a still look uh, very nice. So are we, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I only have pictures of three of them in the, in the slide presentation, but it was actually a very difficult task to look at the photos um, that you had remaining and uh, make a selection um, because they were um, really all um, very compelling examples. And uh, we did try to uh, like the slide projection, have you know a, a garden mm -hmm. or a, a, par, a public park, interior spaces, a shop, you know, so that it has a kind of representative um, feel to it. Uh, let's see. Oh. Um, so um, I have to mention, uh, without um, putting him on the spot, but that Benjamin um, Buklo has a, a contemporary of yours. Um, who's here with us tonight has talked about your slide projection at, in relationship to the work of August Sander um, and his typology, um, people of the 20th century. Um, and when we look um, at a, you know, when we look at a, a portrait photograph, um, we, you know, we can see that resonance and it is one of the traditions that the Becher uh, School has certainly been brought into relationship with. And I just wanted to ask you, I mean, you mentioned, you know, with the example of Pina, you know, these were not necessarily things that you were thinking about. Was that the case uh, with Zonder as well? 
<laughs> how aware how aware was one right of that um, tradition at the time? I think the the, the first time that I saw Zander uh, photographs. So when I, when we have been in, in students at the academy, Bernd organized a class tour, what he rarely has done. And this was the August Sander exhibition in, uh, in this museum, which, which is a, a station. Roland Yeah, danke schön. Roland, Roland Seck. And, uh, and I think that maybe I've seen uh, earlier uh, Sander photographs. And in, in the, when I was a child, we lived in, in Köln Lindenthal. Mm -hmm. And in Köln Lindenthal, there was a cafe where, where my mother took me when we, are right, when we finished uh, shopping. And there was a sofa. And uh, above of the sofa, there was a the conditor image of oh. Sander. But I didn't, at this time, I didn't know this, that this mm -hmm. was a sauna. And uh, I remember more the, the good hot chocolate, what they had. <laughs> <laughs> and not Zander's infamous pastry shop. No, I like the photograph. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but for me, it's, it's, uh, it's really difficult to, to give, a, give an answer if something influenced me. Mm -hmm. Maybe yes, maybe no, maybe by accident or what, but... Uh... Mm -hmm. um, one of the other questions um, that we've, we've also thought a lot about with the, the current exhibition, Crossing Lines, uh, Constructing Home, is um, the question or the issue of representing a, a social minority, so in this case, you know, the Turks um, in Germany at this time, from uh, the perspective of you know the majority, right? So being a German-born um, artist, and I'm sure that you're aware of these of these conversations. And I'm I'm curious how how those um, discussions might have changed the way that you look at your photographs from from the 70s, or is it a, a sort of um, Concern to you that now, of course, you know, in 2019, you know, people look at the photographs and they say, well, you know, what was her relationship? You know, is this a, um, a voyeuristic um, mm. project? And those kinds of um, those kinds of questions. Um, I mean, for for me, it was. Uh, I mean, also, it was one of my first. Uh, uh, project which, which I have done for uh, for such a long time, and and uh, I, I, I never thought that that I'm a voyeurist, and I also never had the, and also I mean I think I I was sometimes more discreet or um, discreet and shy and and uh, and. And after a while, I mean, I mean, I didn't go to the private houses or to uh, to the restaurants quite often. I always went there maybe one or two times. Mm -hmm. And but sometimes I met them on the street because in the area where I lived have been some some of their shops. And uh, but I feel guilty that I used them for for my work and. Uh, and because also sometimes they wanted to ask me to help them with this or this or this, and uh, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have been always so nice. They offer me Nescafe, and uh, <laughs> but also other things. And uh, and they, I mean also conversation was not so easy because of a language problem and. Uh, but I feel uh, that they they like me and they they and uh, and but then then also because I feel guilty, I really have to stop. And uh, but also I think mm -hmm. five five years is quite quite a quite a long time. So that yeah. was actually one of the reasons why you ended the series in in 1979. 
Yeah, but but also I, we, I mean I wanted to to work on something else. So and 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 then uh, I get this grant from 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 the academy, and these are used for. Thank. Yeah. <laughs> now we're on. Now we're on target. <laughs> and uh, so I use this for uh, to go to Turkey, and. Uh, I really can I remember quite, quite well at this time I had this uh, small mini car and I, I went with a, with a friend and uh, yeah from from Dusseldorf to we passed Greece what was not so no? and uh, and to Istanbul and I think the but not uh, we, 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 we made two or three stops and uh, and when I saw the traffic in Istanbul, I thought, "Oh, they have uh, they have this uh, old American Straßenkreuzer, you know, these big big cars, and they all wear sunglasses, and uh, it was really uh, an, another world." And uh, and I I made a tour a little bit in in, in Turkey. And uh, people have been really very nice, very helpful, not aggressive, and uh, nothing. And uh, and when when we went for in the restaurants, they invited us, so mm -hmm. it was was quite nice. And and so and, and uh, last year I had an exhibition in in Istanbul in a gallery, and they show in in, in one room uh, a double projection. So the Turkish and the Turkish in Turkey and the German in. Is that the first time that that's been yeah. done since yeah, 1979? Yeah, I mean that's. Yeah, this I don't. But this has been on. I oh, they it. weren't. That's right. Um, so in 1979 at the Conan Gallery, it was um, one after the other. Oh ah, yeah, so yeah, from yeah. Not six at the same to time. Eight, yeah, you showed yeah, yeah. Germany, and then um, nine to. 11 you showed. So Germany. Arno Kuhn took over the, the place of Konrad Fischer, so, to, so it was at the same place. In the same space. Yeah. Um, so what does it mean to now show then, I mean, when you, when you debuted the, the series Turks in Germany, and I'm assuming this was in 1979, the final version of the slide projection as we know it now. What does it mean now to show just Turks in Germany and not these two series which you um, exhibited and, and it seems in some way conceived of as, as pendants to one another? Well, I think it's, it's, it's fine to see only this, this version. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is interesting though because you start to see when you, when you look at both yeah, this, this could be, uh, it's in Turkey, okay. Uh, but it could be in, in yeah. Germany. In yeah, 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 yeah. I had yeah. another from, yeah, yeah. from Germany where yeah, we get yeah. the same, you know, kind of um, situation of, mm. The, mm. of the, um, the kind of bar music um, gathering place and the poster advertising the talent for the evening, um, which is literally seems to be the same graphic designer. Uh, so yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. they're you know, importing those posters. Um, to Germany, uh, so it really does seem like there were a lot of resonances for you in going yeah, to Turkey yeah. for the first time. Yeah, but uh, also sometimes I, I go back in, in Cologne, where, where I live, uh, to the Weidengasse. There are still uh, a lot of uh, Turkish restaurants. And uh, but also I remember that in the beginning, I really like to do shopping there, so mm -hmm. vegetable and uh, that's... <laughs> no, also, I mean, they bring uh, ingredients which we never know before, and, and but now it's it's really changed. You, you see more so wedding clothes, shops, and mm -hmm. jewel, jewel, degree, and uh, not so many uh, shops where you can buy... Uh, and... Where you can buy fruits or vegetable and so on. but restaurants are still there so uh, you mentioned that you liked the way that um, things were set up in in shop windows and uh, the way that um, things were decorated and 
Um, it brought to mind then also a broader interest in the 70s in shop windows and um, that are not a part of, of the series Turks in Germany, but are, um, for example, you know, um, just called now Dusseldorf. Um, mm -hmm. and, and one thing that's also very noticeable about, about many of them is your reflection in the shop window. Mm -hmm. um, and I was hoping we could talk a little bit about that and you know, how, in some ways, in a very subtle way, you are also inserting yourself into um, the, literally the picture, right, that we're getting um, you um, as a, a photographer, for example, here, um, you know, the, the men are looking out of the shop, uh, we get your reflection in the window, and there is a, a reciprocity there um, that I think, um, to our earlier discussion about um, being a voyeur or, or somehow um, exoticizing, you know, I feel like it adds another mm -hmm. um, complication to that discussion. Yeah, maybe I like to look at me. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I have a great picture of that because I think I'm, I'm sure they did. Uh, uh, and you uh, yourself, as a as a, uh, a woman, as a photographer, um, you know, many of the photographs actually are of all male groups, and I love um, I love this um, too. Uh, so I think. Um, you know, maybe you could you could say. I mean, we talked a bit about how you got to know your subjects. You know, but many of these photographs were just taken on the street and with a very fleeting um, meeting. Or a, um, um, did you did you speak to them and say, "Take your picture"? And and uh, no. But this this photograph I remember was on a on a page of a fashion magazine. Oh. And it, they, they, they look like this photograph. I mean, I don't want to say it. But, uh, it, it fits in the magazine. Mm -hmm. It has a totally different meaning what I wanted to show. Uh -huh. So they used it in a... In yeah, a but they asked, of course, uh -huh. for it. But, but this, this was a page about art and exhibitions and so, so it was OK. So that, mm -hmm. And the other photo, the black and white, has, uh, was uh, some of my birthday. And we have been sitting in, in the car. And I think this photograph has been done by, by Axel Hütte or Thomas Struth, I don't know. Oh, this one. The, the black and white. The one of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we took that from the Dusseldorf um, catalog, the recent Dusseldorf yeah. catalog, um, which you know, showed also you and your and your studio um, and uh, and many of those early photographs of the friends and uh, yeah, we can also see some <laughs> some other people. Um, let's see, um, I wanted to um, get to something that you mentioned earlier about um, your interest in sort of the order and, and decoration, and that we see in a lot of the photographs in Turks in Germany already an interest in spaces without people, which is, of course, what you became then best known for. Mm -hmm. Do you see um, a connection there already, you know, your, your interest in pattern and yeah. um, you know, the way that, that, that it comes together compositionally in these early works? I mean, the interest is still there, but I think they, they, they look uh, different. Mm -hmm. Maybe you show some example. Of the, of the most recent one? Yeah, yeah. Yes, um, you can do that. Um, here, for, well, this is not the best example. This one, um, broken. But you know that uh, I'm, I'm really going, going back to these things. I mean, there's a Dusseldorf exhibition. I mean, also, uh, of course, now I, I, I look sometimes uh, in my archive because I'm, I'm, uh, some people are asking for, for pictures from the earlier time of, of mine. And because not everything is so well organized, how I, 
should be. And uh, I find that hard to believe, actually. <laughs> and uh, so that's. Uh, I, th I think I really have to be more serious with what I have done a long time ago, so that's... Well, this was a wonderful, so when you sent me um, Broken, you know, I thought yeah. immediately back to, um, to that Dusseldorf photograph, and it seems there's now an, uh, um, obviously a, a closer, a detailed um, look at, at those mm. surfaces, mm. And a, and a increasing abstraction in the work, but the subject um, is, um, in many cases, it seems I, I, not identical, but but very very similar. And for for me, this is a, a really uh, wonderful experience uh, to do a different work, because this is not mit dem großen Nothing has to be organized. I don't have to carry also with when someone is helping me the equipment and things like this. Uh, no, no, not necessary to ask for permission. And uh, just spontaneously, when I see something, I take out the camera of my back. And uh, but of course now it's digital. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're referring to the fact that when you are doing um, the architectural spaces like Pierpoint Morgan Library for, of course, there's all of the planning and the and the logistics and the equipment. And here, with your your yeah, yeah. digital camera, you can sort of shoot. Um, but you did you did make a point of telling me that when I refer to these as the spontaneous works, that there still is a lot of um, post production and, yeah, yeah. and all of the work that, of course, goes into um, completing the work. Um, here's another, uh, also from 2018. Great, so I would um, like to ask if you would be willing to take a few questions from the audience. Before well, we, uh, when the audience is willing to do. The audience has mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. Benjamin, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I can't do that one very dumb question, but I think it's still interesting. Why the Turks, not the Spanish, not the Italians, why not the Portuguese? Why did you focus on one ethnic population only? Um, warum hast du nur die Türken ausgewählt und nicht die anderen spanischen, Ach so. italienischen Ja, oder die, die, die Italiener mit ihren köstlichen Eiskaffees. Äh, <lacht> also, we're talking about Italians and their wonderful ice cream. Yeah. And also restaurants. So, uh, uh, I Was it because the Turkish were the most exotic, unusual, yeah, but I, strange I, people? I, I, as I hope I remember correctly. I think the Turkish have been later. And also, uh, I mean, the Italian ice cafe, I know since I was a child. And I, I liked it very much. And uh, but. Exotic, I would not say, but uh, they really changed the uh, situation on the street and in the, you know, the park in Cologne, and, uh, and I never have seen something uh, before like this. I think, too, the, the Turks were the largest, um, so they were, um, Italians were already beginning in 1955, but the Turks, um, the, uh, begins in 1961, um, and they quickly um, actually became the largest group. And then after um, 1973, when the recruitment program ended, um, were, the, were the most, they, they stayed. Whereas many of the um, other um, uh, laborers who'd come as a part of the program returned to their countries or went on to, uh, to somewhere else. And mm -hmm. I think what happened is that then also, the um, 
the sort of multinational character of the program initially was largely forgotten. So now if you say, you know, guest worker in Germany, the association is largely with the Turks, even though as we saw from Armando Rodriguez, uh, the Portuguese carpenter, um, actually um, they were coming from many different countries um, over the course of, um, of almost, almost two decades. Well, I think what, what I have done, uh, so in, in the winter, the Italian, ice cafes or restaurants, no, only the ice cafes change the program. <laughs> they get uh, the carpets, get a carpet shop or what is more useful in, in winter. Oh, in the winter. The, the, the Italians go back to their homes and so, but, but I, I think from this situation I, I took some photographs. Mm -hmm. I have to check my archive. <laughs> Thank you. And I should say, you know, now today in Germany there are, you know, three million um, Turkish Germans, mm -hmm. um, or um, and I, I think it's something where, you know, when we look from today's perspective, that was actually one of my questions for you, which I forgot. Um, you know, when we look from today's perspective to go back and, and look at these early photographs, um, it's, it feels so much a part of Germany now. Um, and I mean, having lived in Cologne, you know, it was um, these were not unfamiliar scenes, you know, of the shops, um, mm. even though you know I was there three three decades later. Um, back. Back. Oh, Makita. Yeah. Hi. Um, my question has to do. I've been looking at this and thinking a lot about the fact that um, American photographers were really just beginning to experiment seriously and work in color photography. And I'm just wondering if you, um, if you had any thoughts as you were pursuing this in color, if, there was, if, it, if using the side film was a way for you to work out issues that you had with color, or if you had any um, particular thoughts as you um, pursued this project and chose color as the medium. So, um, uh, warum Farbe, also dass die Amerikaner dann angefangen haben, in dieser Zeit auch wichtig dann mit Farbe zu arbeiten und ähm, welche genaue Themen hat die Farbigkeit für sie ähm, beschäftigt in der Zeit? Also, uh, yeah, color, because uh, I mean, of course, there is also black and white material for slides and uh, but especially with uh, how they are closed and how they, the decoration, I think it needs color. But, I, but as I mentioned before, I have done uh, color and black and white at the same time. And also sometimes I, I show the black and white photographs together with a, with a, with a color slide projection. Ah. And, uh, Which we didn't do, but we can. Yeah. <laughs> um, just want to show, I mean, one that for me really speaks to, well, actually any of these, um, but um, this I find one of the most oh, yeah. stunning in terms of the color. I mean, to yeah, imagine yeah. this as a black and white and how much visual information, um, you know, um, I don't want to say would lose, but it would certainly change um, the focus um, of this composition uh, as a black and white print. I mean, this is also, I, I sometimes uh, people ask me with uh, my interior photographers, why color? And uh, what, I, what I also have done with, with this kind of work, I have done both at the same time. And then I made prints and then I compare and, and I think I prefer more the, 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 the color. Oh, we had a question up here and then uh, Eva. I was just wondering if, while you were working on Turks in Germany, you were working on any other projects at the same time. Warum Sie in der Zeit, wo Sie Türken in Deutschland gemacht haben, keine anderen Projekte zeitgleich gemacht haben? So, uh, at, at, at this time, I, I was not a student. I, I was uh, looking 
uh, what I can do with, uh, with my life. Um, also before I, I have uh, worked in, in other kind of studios, but always studios, uh, uh, they took uh, work with photography. And, uh, and this was, uh, I mean, my interest was that uh, the place where I lived since really long, long time, and only for two years I, I went to another city in Cologne. And when I come back, for me, there was a, a big change. And, uh, and also, of course, I, I, I read in, in newspapers a lot of uh, Turkish, Turkish Gastarbeiter. And I wanted to make my own opinion. And so this. In a way, I, I didn't know. I, I know why, why I wanted to do it, but I didn't know what will happen with the photographs which I will take or have taken. But it does seem like it did really consume you in those those years, and was the focus um, of your attention. Yeah, and uh, also I. Maybe at this time I, I have done some other photograph, but I don't remember. It was not important for me. I wonder whether you can tell us a little more about how you compose the frame, how you, you know, structure your picture, because what is really striking about these photographs, these slides, is an incredible um, composition the kind of, you know, you talked about color and the patterning and the kind of emphasis on surface on the one hand, and you always choose a, an unusual um, framing, you know, unusual cut, like here, this strong diagonal that pulls you in. Do you, how did you do that? Did you think ahead? They're very, very thought through, so I was wondering what, whether you can share with us some of the thoughts that you've had in putting them together. Yeah, thank you for the compliment. Um, it was easy for me. I mean, I mean, also, I, I mean, the Turkish people, they really like to get photographed. And uh, this makes it also easy for me. And. Uh, I think I, I, I didn't say uh, anything special to them, and there was an interior and uh, and also what, what you, you said with the, the pullovers. I mean, amazing. Yeah. I, I, nobody can do it better than 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 they have done it. Thank you. Question over here. Um, hi. Um, First of all, thank you so much for um, the talk. I'm from Turkey, <laughs> and I really appreciate you accepting the problematic nature of this work. Um, my question is, um, I realize that you left all your uh, photographs untitled, and I was wondering why, despite portraying certain subjects, you left these photographs untitled. Why do they not avoid this? So, without title are only the pictures which are in the projection. Right, so when, when they're prints, um, like the, the black and white prints, um, they have the titles. Um, but is that because with the projection, you would, you would have to title all 80 slides, or yeah. because you have combined text and projection in, in, yeah, uh, 80 in, pictures. in another work. Yeah, yeah, but, but uh, I think it was, for me it was not important to know that this photograph has been taken in Cologne and Düsseldorf, Bochum, and uh, Dortmund, and uh, Hamburg, Berlin, and so on. One more. Um, one more question on technology and format, which is quite remarkable. Uh, why do artists starting in the late 1960s, for example, Dan Graham, whom you obviously knew about as well, um, prefer to show 
slides over printing pictures. So it, there's a whole series of major works by artists like you and Dan Graham and Alan Sekula in 89, who says, I do not want to print my pictures. I will show my pictures only as slides. So the Bechers, for example, never did a slideshow. So there's a rebellion in the technology as well, which is really important to say, I do not want simply to be a photographer. I want to enter a medium, which is all the more interesting because it is a medium that is now completely obsolete. And at the time, it was incredibly promising. It was a very popular anti-aesthetic operation to do slides rather than printing pictures. So is that something you can relate to as an argument, or is that completely unconscious part of the historical determination? I can quickly translate it if necessary. It's too complicated to. When I das richtig verstanden habe, the medium of uh, slide projection. Uh, at first, to uh, uh, the, the, slide, the slides are coming from the lab as a slide, so nothing, nothing in between. And then I really liked very much uh, the machine, where the slides and the sound of the machine, and then also the that you can show them big or small, and, and, and uh, I, I, th I think it's, I was fascinating, especially by the size, and sometimes uh, I've shown they bigger than, than I am, and, uh, and also the, I, th I think to have a, have a dark room, not too, too dark, and, uh, and then, then you enter, and then, then you, you see something, and that's that's uh, a, that's a different, and uh, maybe sometimes if we come back and we show some of my newer projection, yes, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, talk more about it. Thank you. Two more, two more questions. Um, so when you took this series of photos, these people they were newcomers to this country. Um, they were foreigners externally, um, but later on they might settle down in specific cultural communities in the local space. They might uh, stay there permanently. So after, I'm curious, after you finish this project, have you ever been like looked back to this specific demographic in the local space? Are you curious about um, their social life and the shift in their lifestyle captured in your original slides. You could have. Do, you, do you mean would would she return to it as a subject um, now? Not necessarily, um, but looked back. Um, so the question is, looking back now, given that um, you know the the Turkish um, population, you know, is, is in Germany now, um, you know, three million. Um, the reflection sort of from, from today's perspective on that earlier work. I mean, I think in some ways, um, uh, she mentioned that she, you know, you can still go to the Weidengasse in Cologne. I mean, many of the places still are the same um, or have changed, but um, have stayed um, very present. Um, but the question is whether you um, are curious then about you know where where these subjects are now, and um, and uh, kind of what the uh, development is um, since since the seventies. Yeah, would you Nine. would you do it again? Nine. <laughs> no. Also, I can't. I mean, it's it's. I don't have the habit anymore. So to. But to, we. To photograph um, people. Yeah, sometimes they appear, and uh, but uh, no, I could not. I, I also uh, could not go in a in a shop and ask, "Can I can I take a photograph?" I mean, it's it's what. Uh, also nine. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had one. Oh, we can't.
Keine, keine, keine Frage? Nein, keine, auch keine eine, Frage. Noch eine. Noch eine? Okay. Um, I was just wondering if you had um, ever gotten reactions from either the subjects of your photos or from the Turkish uh, German community in general, either at the time that you would photograph them in 1979 or when they've been shown since. Haben, haben die um, Dargestellten oder auch die uh, türkische Gemeinde auf die Fotos je reagiert? Also, uh, what, what I have done uh, to, to some, where, where they, 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 some give me their address and I went to the private house and give them a, a print. Right, so I think we will Stop there and thank you so much for you. your time. Mm -hmm.